What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Hand of Merlin, episode number three of me, Gamer Noob. Let's continue towards Merlin's Cave. On a remote mountain path, by a clear silver stream, you come across a dead abomination. Its limbs slice off its body. Next to it lies a woman, pale of face and crimson of hair, clutching at a wound in her chest. Ah, how pleasant to see a human face. If only you had come a little earlier. Still, may I plead for your assistance? My injury is severe, and I require an extract of mountain ash to survive. There is an herbalist nearby who might have what I need. Would you be so kind? By the way, if I'm a little bit quiet tonight, my lady is sleeping in the next room, so yeah, that's why. The herbalist's house is in ruins. Perhaps the same abomination that injured the woman you were trying to save passed through here. Before, luckily, many of the herbalist goods are still intact, including a bottle of labeled mountain ash extract. Less luckily, you were wrong about who destroyed the house. It was the abomination that was surrounding you. Most likely. Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe. It could have been a coincidence. Maybe they were also looking for mountain ash. Maybe they have somebody that's injured. Could be. You don't know. A little rude of you to assume, actually. It's been a day or so since I've played, so I'm kind of just like remembering at the moment, honestly, what all we uh, ended up getting. <laughs> if I like move you up. And then just like throw this here. Didn't seem too bad. I have a plan here. I want to run him like up in and then I want to put him on parry. Can I hit from there you think? Oh no, it's close. Nope. Oh, that's right. We took the thing that uh, we'll shoot more, but we can miss. See how many eighty percent chances we miss there. Only two, one. That's not bad. Yes, everybody, go after this guy. Yes. Or not. Could you like back off? You're being a little rude. Nobody's going after him. Well, I guess at least they're kind of like surrounding him. Nice parry. Yeah, get out of here. Let's first actually caustic coating his weapon. And we're gonna beautiful. Let's go ahead and take this. Out. You're marked, mother trucker. Now you're too close to shoot, right? You definitely are. Let's move you over here then. I thought he regained it. I was like, how did you regain it? <laughs> My 90 and 80% misses are just so <laughs> BS, bro. I'm telling you, like, that's all we get is just 90% miss, 80% miss. Like, how? How? <clears throat> Shenanigans, I'm telling you. a little rude. Yeah, yeah. Hit back. Get out of here. He's gonna do something now, too. Perfect. Let's give him some armor back so he doesn't lose it. And let them do whatever they want to do. 
That should count as moving, in my opinion. I'm just saying. The fact that it doesn't and doesn't trigger this is just some shenanigans. Oh, I totally forgot about fast forwarding, by the way. My bad. Let's get you out of melee range. Zero percent chance to hit. Sure, we'll take our twenty percent chance to hit there, I guess. Dude, he just doesn't hit. He just doesn't hit. No, I definitely wanted to end the range, but okay. Like it's so triggering. chance to hit you just miss, 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 miss. you turn to the woman with the stream and give her the bodily found she rubs the extract on her wounds and to her astonishment it instantly closes and the woman leaps up as if she'd never been injured how splendid she says with a grin oh i thought i would never swim in these waters again come come and i will show you my favorite cave follower might as well the woman leads you to a small cave by a waterfall within it stands an ornate wooden table with a silver comb upon it a bed made of reeds and a chest bearing a golden aquila she points at the ladder take as much gold as you deserve friends then leave i wish to bathe and if you saw me naked why you would never leave again Alright, Merlin's cave, let's go. The ground quakes, the shadows shift, immense magical energies distort the air. You sense a powerful presence approaching you, and then your minds are almost blotted out as Merlin's spirit descends. Morgan Le Fay appears before you. Oh, wow. Well, you missed the opportunity to take mana by having it maxed out. Oops. Merlin, Morgana laughs, and you are not certain whether she's furious or amused. Her voice makes you tremble in agony. So you escaped my trap after all. Well, I can't say I'm surprised. You were always crafty, weren't you? But at least you've lost most of your powers. Good. You underestimate me, Morgana. Merlin responds through you, and his voice makes your teeth rattle and your stomach lurch. I underestimate you, Morgana says bitterly. No, Merlin, I knew you would free yourself eventually. I knew nothing could really stop you. But you don't see what you became, do you? You don't understand, because all you can think about is your never-ending war. I didn't choose this war. You didn't? Really, Merlin? The little apes on the, this planet, they have no choice but you of being of such power? Morgana shakes her head. Your words convinced me once more, Merlin. But not anymore. Look where your choices led us. It's no, it's too great a burden for anyone, and to take it upon yourself is madness. We have to do what is right. And who says what's right? Who decides what's more valuable? The base lives of a million apes or the wisdom and knowledge of an immortal? You, Merlin? And once you decide, what actions will you justify by this decision? What will you sacrifice knowing the cause is righteous? Merlin, I'd hoped you might have changed, but I see you're still the same. The shadow shift again and Morgana's gone. Merlin's spirit recedes and your ears are ringing. What did we get? Holy, I don't know what we got. Alright, let's get to the city. Into the city. I'm not going to read this very much, just because... I might, I might, I only explore, I'll do the explore thing, but... This one. I don't know, this is a 50-50. You're stopped by an angry-looking soldier. He glares at you suspiciously. We do not you do prying eyes in the city. There's enough trouble already without overly inquisitive fool, fools making more or... Saracen spies skulking about. Sure, you mean no harm. The city's been heavily fortified and soldiers patrol the streets. Oh, we've already done that. Okay. We'll visit a healer. We need, like, a little bit of health. Thank you. Marketplace. Check out the relic shop, I guess. Plus one move. Swiftness, plus two move. Okay. Bag of tricks. Restore one charge to all abilities. Okay. Poppy of the East. Gain one cycle for lethargic. Huh. I think I'm gonna I think I am gonna upgrade his armor even more. Alright, well that's about that. Let us continue on. I to leave, please. He retired to the in. Beautiful, let's go. Crossing the Marca Hispanica, you come across two young damsels being escorted by a Frankish knight. Knight and damsels alike seem distressed. Speak to them. The knight the the knight, the relief of having found someone to speak to, is apparent on his face. Immediately explains the situation. The two damsels have run away from their families together to pursue their forbidden love for each other. He offered to find them and succeeded, but now he is faced with a dilemma he cannot solve. According to the code of chivalry to which I have dedicated myself, true love is the greatest of all principles. It is the greater than the law and tradition, greater even than common morality. Do we not 
revere Lancelot and consider him a true knight despite his love for Guinevere. Lancelot's actions were not sinful, though they caused great pain, for they were motivated by love. And what of Angelica and Madeira? But if this is true, how can I return these damsels to their families? When I when I judge that their love, though forbidden, is true, and yet if I do not return them, am I not abandoning them to the terrible danger of this strange time? Let them go, he says. Yes, that would be what the knight's devotion to true love demands of me. But what if in doing so I condemn these damsels to a cruel death? What if one day the songs are sung of Sir Theory the Foolish, who abandoned two fair damsels of the wilderness for the sake of his convictions? Yeah, I become their protector. Sir Theory's eyes brighten at the words. Indeed, why did I think of it? To protect damsels, to stand loyally at their side is a task for a true knight, not to return them home like lost cattle. Long have I searched for a calling, for a way to do virtuous deeds, this shall be it. I shall protect these damsels and their love in all the dark days to come. None shall speak ill of them, and none shall harry them. His uncertainty cast aside, Sir Theory kneels before the damsels and swears to protect their love until his dying day. The damsels are surprised, but thankful at this turn of events. Give me my renown. I, don't, I think this is going to just go here where this one's going to go. Might as well. Approaching a hamlet at dusk, you encounter a group of men huddled around a fire in a spot bought shelter by a large outcropping. Some of them are Christians, while others are Moors, and all of them appear to be drinking and gambling. They invite you to participate on the condition of not informing anyone at the gathering. Let's gamble. This one. Oh, is this one. See? What did I tell you? It wasn't a major victory, but we still got a little bit of gold. The men good-naturedly congratulate you on your victory and remind you not to tell their wives or preachers about this gathering. No problem, buds. Push on. The cold mountain air smells of decay, and strange things are growing beneath the snow. The veil has been wounded, and the cataclysm has spilled forth, but you do not see any of its usual abominations. Instead, you see a small shrine. You have seen its kind before here in the mountains, but you do not for but you do not what forgotten god is worshipped here. Approach the shrine. The corruption has left the shrine untouched, at least for now. Is there some true power here that can withstand the cataclysm, or is it mere coincidence? It's hard to tell, but there is something moving about the resilience of the spot where people once came to pray. Heal the veil. You pray to start healing the wounds of the veil, but this causes the lurking abominations to attack. They cannot tolerate a threat to spread the cataclysm. Let's defend ourselves, then. Come at me, you stupid beasts. We are not scared. Oh, they get to go first. I am a little more scared than what I once was. These things are creepy. They're like chrysalids from freaking X Con, dude. These are the ones that explode, I believe. Alright, I always forget that I can. What are you? Bruce back. Whenever hit by a photo, four damage to all units in melee range. Oh my. No, no, none of that now. Let's move you back. Go ahead and mark this guy. Go ahead and do this as well. I'm going to caustic coating this guy's weapon. Before he goes in, though, I'm going to do this. Send him here. Go ahead and chalice. Cleave it up. And honestly, let's uh, back that guy away. Nice. <coughs> when are you gonna move? Oh, there we go. You moved. No shoot. I guess no shoot. Oh, there we go. At least we got a shot off. Need to move you before we really do anything crazy there. Alright, he's preparing, he missed. Let's take some health damage in a second. Yep, there's some health damage. At least he's got a lot of health. What are you guys? You guys explode, right? Yeah, you're gonna get hit. Because enemies don't miss in this game. At least his AoE 
hits. Parry. Oh, walking through that is very bad. Okay. Single action deal 20 points. Oh, Bog. It's sick. Please, with your 90% chance for once in your life, hit the freaking deal. Thank you. That was a bad fight. Having destroyed the abominations, you proceed to cleanse the wound in the veil. The alien growth of the cataclysm begin to shrivel and die. Perhaps one day people will come here and work for them. Woohoo. Hopefully, this heroic mode is not too difficult. Um, for once, you're making good time. The road is. In good repair and the wind is in your favor. Neither bandits nor abominations bar your way. As you pass through a village, a group of men hail you. They need your help with a matter. Alright, let's get involved. The situation is a little more complicated than it had at first appeared. It began when the priest's beloved cat climbed the tree in the churchyard and could no longer come down. The priest then sent his loyal dwarf to retrieve it, but he became stuck as well. Finally, the priest ascended the tree himself, and now all three approached the top chatting for help. Save the cat, the priest, and the dwarf. After much coaxing and many attempts, you succeed at getting all three out of the tree. Though the priest tears his frock and sends half naked the village thank you for your help and the door hands you a small coin first thanks all right let's hope this heroic knows not too scary oh dear i didn't realize i was out of food one cold morning your journey takes you past an abandoned house perhaps an old herbalist shop on the side of the road there was a battle here but it is clear that it was a battle against man against man not a fight against abominations how foolish it seems how foolish it all seems when you consider the cataclysm. Whether the people who lived here were Christians or Sa Saracens, what was the virtue in destroying their home? We have you surrounded. Lay down your weapons and surrender your gold, and we may let you live. A voice suddenly calls. Are these the bandits, Christians, or Saracens? If they prey upon ordinary people, it matters little. Alright, well, we got a fight before our big fight. She's looking a little bit scary, I'm not gonna lie. Well, at least when they have us surrounded, they're not killing us instantly. That's nice. I'm not gonna lie, we waiting in here, boys. Come at me. You're so good at the video game. Do it again. Oh, it's so good. He's actually hit two in a row. Crazy. Become parried. Oh no. Don't stagger me. That's just rude. Let's mark him first. I still don't remember what Mark does. Two damage taken from Marowyn. Okay. so he helps him out a little bit all right stand your ground friend actually you know what don't enter don't stand your ground move a little bit ow any of you guys ever want to miss i'm like more than happy to allow you to do it just saying She'll be fine. All right, his pay, of course. Dude, lacerated hurts, man. Stop staggering me, oh my god. So aggravating. Oh my god, Perry. 
Mary. <laughs> Stupid, dude. I hate the parry, man. No combo. I mean, I know I have a parry too, but still. Also, the stagger is where it's really at, man. They're messing me up with the stagger. Dang, our health is low, dude. At least we got him. We need some health. We got some food at least, too. The bandits are dead. For a moment, you wonder how different these men truly were from knights. Who killed in the name of their king? Had the world been taken in a different turn, they might have been peasants, merchants, or even scribes. But now they are dead, and that is all. The only thing of house and value is the weapon. It would seem that, of, that it was of no help to the inhabitants who left it untouched, but perhaps you may find use. Yo, I found use, all right. All right, rough fight incoming. At long last, you've arrived at Roncevaux Pass. Your journey through the Marca Hispanica is over. The abominations are everywhere. The battle prophesied by Roland is about to begin. Count Oliver, Roland's best mint friend, has taken command of Roland's surviving men and is preparing for battle. He's far from you across a sea of abominations, but you can see that he is calm and collective, making the final preparations for the charge. When he sees you, he lifts his hand in greeting. Oliver's men are few, but the abominations are many. But why is Oliver shows no fear? He is not afraid to die for the cause. A cry goes up among the men. Montjoy, Montjoy, it is the sound you'll never forget, and so they charge into battle. This is going to be a rough fight in comparison to the other ones we've had because we are low on health. Although I think I have... Yeah, I have this. I'm going to use some mana. What are you? Taking damage, apply two stacks, spawn ability stacker. Each turn set all allies to inspired. Okay. Is that it? Just those three? You're the thorn toad. You're the thick skinned one. And you're the wrathful one. Okay. I might not use that right away then. Cost weaponry. a chance to do that. And just throw up your parry. Come at me. Nice. Oh, he takes damage because of him. Right, right. Well, we need to move. You back them. Can I just hit him? I feel like there's got to be some spot where I can just hit him, right? I guess not. Well, this is dumb. Whatever, just do your thing. Ow. 
Let's get you out of this. Come at me. <laughs> Marowind's so good. War hero, survived the battle. Yeah, we did. That was good. Good fight for us. Finally, the battle is over. The abominations are dead, and Roland Savu Pass has fall not fallen to the enemy. If there is a future, this day will be remembered in a song, and if there is none, you will face the end with pride. The battle may have been won, but your feeling of triumph takes a bitter note when you realize that you're the only ones left standing. You had Merlin by your side, and none of the others did, and yet they fought without sorcery and secret knowledge, and without their sacrifice, you too would have perished. But we did it. But we did it! Yes! Cool screen. As we move into the next area. How will the next area fare for us, I wonder? Who knows? Who knows? Not me. Oh, nice time for a break. A stretch in. Reconquista. Oh, we gotta do this and then we gotta reach Jerusalem. That's right. You've come to Al and Dallas, a rich and powerful land ruled by Amir Abal Abd al Rahman ibn al Hakam al Mursi. Yep, nope. Um, the Amir, known in the north as King Mersilius, a land of scholars and poets. So the war against Charlemagne and Galahad has brought forth harsher qualities. By the time you descend from the mountains of the Marco Hispanica to the plains of Alandalus, the story of the heroes of the Rins of the Pass has already begun to spread, and such a story of hope is dearly needed, for now the cataclysm grows stronger than before. Things have changed since Albion, and the entire Vale is now infected. The difference is as that between a man who has a wound and a man whose very blood is poisoned, visible powers tear at the grail like waves on a raging ocean, and it whirs and groans in the strongest ways. You can only hope that Merlin knows what he's doing. The famed city of Sargosa has been the site of many battles, but none so fierce as the siege against a stream of abominations that almost reduced its walls to rubble. Without the victory in the in the past, it would have not stood, and so it is that a delegation has been sent to meet you. The leader of the de delegation is one of Amir of the Amir. It is said to be the wisest of the Amir's knights. His name is Barakat, but in the songs and interpreters, he is called Blancargan. Peace be upon you, he says solemnly. Truly peace is now our greatest desire. I have spent many years trying to convince my lord that Albion need not be our enemy, though King Galahad has made the task most difficult. Blancandrin and the delegation escort you to the city of Sargosa, a beautiful city transformed into a bleak fortress by the ravages of endless war. We are used to suffering here in Sargosa. Blancandrin says sadly, I, have I will have a servant fetch you a physician. You have sacrificed much. Yes, thank you. Um, I hope your victory at the pass can be at the beginning of the end of the war, a symbol that we are all children of God, he says, as the physician binds your wounds. But I understand that your quest is to reach the Holy Land. I recommend that you head to Mersiah and take a ship after the blacksmith. Uh, more, ar more armor, please. Dude, my movement would be so low if I did that. Oh my goodness. Staff three. That's not about Albion. I'm not going to read this stuff, but you guys can read it if you want. All right, we need to find our way to a city to buy some stuff. That seems like the closest one. So, because we're out of food, we're going to take one damage per thing. So we can do it in two, three, four, five, six moves. Ugh. One, two, three, four, five moves. One, two, three, four, five, six moves. Five moves. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Go. We gotta go through some corruption, though. Yes, that's on. Ahead of you lies a dark and shadowy forest. A welcome reprieve. Oh, I just realized what the time was from the scorching sun of the Al Andalus. But as you approach it, a damsel warns you that the devil lies amongst the trees, taking the shape of a black hound. You ignore her warnings. And it changed the black forest. I wish I could feed it, but I'll take another path. All right, guys. 
And that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a like. If you've got anything to say, go to the comments below. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscription button. That helps me out a ton. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you next time. Peace.